Hey, welcome to Church for the Rest of Us. This is a virus edition. I don't know if it's going to go viral or not, but definitely our pandemic edition. And it's going on. We're broadcasting to you live from our studios high atop the Family Church Complex in downtown West Palm Beach, Florida. Today I have with me, as always, Leslie Bennett, my co-host, Carly Seelman, our engineer, and Derek Simpson, one of the pastors here at Family Church. Derek oversees all of our age group and program ministries at all 13 of our campuses, as well as being the campus pastor for our downtown campus, which is the largest campus in the Family Church Network. So Derek, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Glad to be here, as always. Yeah, so we have a lot going on. Uh, so the um, the social distancing guidelines have been extended. So the president has said nationally we're going to extend those through April 30th. And our governor, Ron DeSantis, has declared South Florida a hot spot for the virus. And so our guidelines have been uh, extended through the middle of May. So there's no telling how long this is all going to go. Leslie, this is definitely making family church more complicated. It sure is. And you just talked uh, recently about probably in the next two weeks, we're going to know some people who had the virus. And in the next two months, we might know some people who've actually um, experienced death because of the virus. And we're seeing that start to happen now in South Florida. So your um, kind of amateur futurist hat is really working out well for us. I don't right know now. if I should be an amateur. I think <laughs> I, think I think you might I be a pro be now. Pro. I might think be a so. pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Unfortunately, today, which uh, today we've started having reports roll in from multiple campuses of um, significant leaders in our church that are uh, secluded at home or sequestered or being quarantined, being tested, and so it's really only a matter of time before this continues to snowball because we are definitely a hot spot. That's right. Now, one of the things that we did. Um, three weeks ago when we realized this was happening as we came in, we said, okay, we're going to have to do church differently. So we put together a bunch of working groups, a bunch of task forces, as we call them at family church to help us think about how to do church in a different way. We call it family church at home, which basically means we're a virtual church instead of a face-to-face church, uh, for a while. So Derek, you, um, are the one who is overseeing and coaching and interfacing with all of these different task forces. So I'd love for you just to talk about what you're doing and how that's working in a way that could maybe encourage some of the people listening to this podcast. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Pastor Timmy, you know, that say the day after we made the decision to go online for that Sunday, we came and we huddled in your office Monday morning and we just started talking about, uh, and you already had some great thoughts in place about what, what's changed for us now in this new church environment. And uh, we made the decision very early on. It looked like it could happen for a long time. And so we set ourselves on trajectory for a longer arc, I think, than maybe some, what some were thinking, you know, initially. And uh, so we did. We put together some teams. Uh, one of them has to deal with our uh, weekend experience and what church looks like now in an online environment. One of them looks like what our, what our groups look like. Uh, we put together a team to talk about how do we do kids ministry and how do we do student ministry. Uh, we put together a research team to talk about how do we, uh, how should we understand and how should we think about the virus and its impact on different churches. And, uh, and then we put together a team to talk about specifically how do we care for people uh, in, this, in this new environment, in this new way of doing church. And Leslie, this has kind of been a, a new attack plan for us because we work so hard at being a face-to-face right. church but now we're working hard at doing it at home. And your team oversees all of our external communications, web, print, which we don't have right now, (laughs) social media, which we're trying to be better at. (laughs) Yeah, so, you know, I'm just curious as to your perspective on how this all unfolded as we pivoted on a dime. Yeah, I mean, personally, it's pretty crazy. Like Derek said, we kind of pulled in on that Monday morning. I call it a war room experience because we basically had to change our tactics um, Mm -hmm. pretty much overnight. And personally, from my perspective, I just think it's a pretty glorious thing to watch. Um, So as we kind of got together and decided what we were going to do and decided what these task forces were, then Derek just took that and ran with it. And like that afternoon, he had deliverables Mm -hmm. for each one of these teams. Well, we first we put the people together. Yeah. So if you want to walk us through the process, Derek, awesome. of how we did that, because to me, um, that was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. It's hard to believe that it was only like a couple of weeks ago. I know. It feels like, like an eternity. It seems like forever ago, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just, we just did what we do, right? We have a very clear picture of who we are as a church and what we're trying to do. And our mission and vision didn't change. And no. so it became really easy for us. We just had to do it different. And so we did. We put together some teams, uh, made sure that there was people from all different kinds of teams and all different kinds of campuses. So we had a really good 
Yeah, first we said to the task yeah. force leaders, like, let us know who you'd want on your team, right? And they submitted they all submitted that to you. They submitted some draft picks. Yep, yeah. they did. Yeah. And then you helped oversee that. Our team, yeah, we, we figured out who needed to go where. And, and then uh, then you're right, Leslie, we did. We started giving them some direction and some, we call it directives and deliverables. Just point them in direction. Here's some things that we expect out of the gate. Uh, and then, but certainly there are minimums. And, and they've they've done such a great job because they have, really just all of them overproduced and over delivered. Hey, let's talk a little bit about that for a moment because some of our listeners are going, okay, again, like we say, every day, okay, we're family <laughs> church and we had all these people to make all these deliverables. Then of course we wouldn't have the problems, but a lot of people listening come to small and medium sized churches, maybe a single staff church or just a few. How could they create some task forces or some working groups with the budget and the resources that they have? What could they learn from what we're learning in doing this? I'm curious as to your perspective. Yeah, that's a great, great question and a great thought. And honestly, some of our teams do have volunteers serving on right. them. You could do all of this with volunteers. And and should. And should. And and uh, and honestly, a lot of the best counsel and best advice that we've gotten as leaders at our church is coming from people that are, that are volunteers that are either in business, some of them have been in military leadership. They've led through, uh, honestly, organizations on a much larger scale and through crisis that are really... Uh, a lot more complex and a lot more intense than even the one that we're leading in now. And so uh, I think those people are in your congregations for sure. Pull them together. They don't have to be face-to-face. In fact, in this environment, they can't be face-to-face. And so uh, get them on a Zoom call, do a FaceTime with them, but help them just coach you through what should you be thinking about and how should you be experiencing and leading through church in a different kind of way. And kind of our philosophy on these task forces and working groups, whenever we know that there are – Uh, big plays that we need to make or changes that we need to make in our organization, we often put a task force or two in place to go and study, research, learn, uh, talk to people, or just have some some space that they create just for this group to have ongoing and robust discussions about the issues that we're facing so they can come back and make recommendations to us as a church. So we've been doing these task force for a long time, yeah. and I do think that churches of any size could do it. Do you, do, you, do you share that perspective? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm thinking about the social media. I don't know if you mentioned that one, but we did put a task force on social media because we always are trying to do social media and do mm-hmm. it better. And even for us, we feel like we have so much room to grow. Mm-hmm. So we actually put a task force together. There are a number of lay people serving on that particular task force right. and making some recommendations um, to us because in every congregation, it doesn't matter how big you are you have social media influencers at your church you just have to identify who they are and then ask them to look at what you're doing and give you some best practices and that's what we've done you know with social media in particular yeah so. yeah that's right listen in fact we learned this this whole process we really learned from a volunteer at our church who gave us the model for it and the idea of using cross-functional leaders whether they're volunteers or, or staff members to give you a different perspective, to come together for a short amount of time and work on a, a singular project or a singular question has been a really helpful model for us. Yeah, and this crisis has actually created space for that because instead yeah. of them having to stack their task force work on top of all of their weekly activities, there's no weekly programming. All of our facilities are shut down. Yeah. Uh, some of them are working from home. So they actually have more space and energy to get on the one thing that they're focusing on these task forces and create some, you know, some some information flow for us that we wouldn't have without them, but also some recommendations. And so if I was putting together task forces, or a church of any size, I would identify one or two or three problems that you are facing and you're not sure how to attack. I would put the teams together to work. It could be a team as small as three or as large as 10, put them on there. And then I would give them what you call directives. In other words, you got to tell them what you're trying to get them to do and deliverables, which include timeframes. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's a big deal because they need to know what you're asking them to produce because otherwise they're going to come back and go, well, we looked on this website and saw this church and I learned this in business. And when I was in college, they did mm-hmm. this and they'll just throw a bunch of jello at you and you need them to come back with. So as a result of all of this, we recommend that you start an Instagram account, that you monitor it every day, that, you know, whatever it is, that you start Facebook groups, you know. So what are some of the deliverables that that have actually come through for us that have helped? Yeah, well, we, I mean, our team has done such a, so like I said before, such a great job. One of the things, um, you know, I think that we did early on is, was we gave them permission to 
and not just permission, but instruction to think outside the box because we're doing things differently. And so a lot of, a lot of what we've done, you know, we're doing kids ministry. There are kids ministry programming. Uh, we're doing that totally different now because we, we're doing now a live handoff between our live, our main worship service and it leads directly into our, uh, our kids ministry programming. Uh, our, um, our groups team, uh, within the just with a, within a couple of days, took yeah. sixty something groups that didn't previously exist, and we had now sixty you know sermon based discussion groups that are that are meeting online. Uh, our um, Leslie, what are some of the other ones? Our social media team has done a good job. They've they've given one pagers to all of our campus pastors on how to facilitate and how to how to make Facebook Live videos and worship services, how to make all those things. And we kind of had to put in place a structure in terms of this is a volunteer opportunity moderating some of these pages. If you, Even if you only have, depending on how you're putting your service out, if it's on Facebook, if you have a church online, which is free, by the way, church online account, um, or YouTube, um, then you want somebody on there interacting with people in the chat. And so this is a perfect staff or volunteer opportunity um, to go on. And Carly's directed a lot of that and given them some best practices about how do you do this, what are the information you want to put in the chat. Um, we're doing a digital Get Connected card to try to hear back from people. So we're putting that digital Get Connected card out there. So things just so, I mean, we're just having to move so fast and make quick decisions and then just execute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, the most important thing that we do as church leaders is help shepherd and care for people. Right. And so I think within the first couple of days of getting these task force spin up, uh, we had we had made over a thousand phone calls mm -hmm. to uh, members of our church who are 65 years of age and older, uh, who we know are the most vulnerable population for this particular uh, virus, and uh, and we also have a shepherding system in place so that making sure that everybody that we know about that attends family church is engaged in any kind of way is getting regular communication from Pastor Jimmy and his office and also regular communication from their campus pastors and their volunteers and their, and their small group leaders. And another big one that we haven't talked too much about is our weekend. I think we originally called it weekend production, um, which would be like our church online, our Sunday morning worship, which is always our primary focus here at Family Church. We want to have the best Sunday morning worship that we possibly can. Of course, now we're looking yeah. at what other kind of things can we put out there for people to encourage them. Um, so this team is running with all of that. I would say that's a pretty big chunk of what we're working on right now. Yeah, really. I mean, again, who we are doesn't change. We're right. a face-to-face. -face, we want to make personal connections. We just have to do that in a different kind of way. And so that team really is helping us think through not only what does the weekend experience look like, but how do we maintain levels of connection at different times and different different days of the week and, and honestly through different demographics in our church. But how do we do that at, with a high standard of excellence and utilizing all the technology that we have and, and not changing who Family Church is, but just bringing it to people in a different kind of way. Yeah, and we're learning. So let me yeah. just give you some examples of some things we've learned over the three weeks. So the first time we were going to do uh, church online, uh, we called it church online. Then we said, we don't like that because you can't really have church online. Church is the people. So then we started calling it Family Church uh, Worship at Home, which I think is much better. It fits our model. It fits our mission statement. And it actually more accurately describes what is what is happening. We are connected virtually, but we are worshiping at home. Uh, the other thing that we found out, so we put it on Facebook Live. And then we said, oh, my gosh, you've got to do Facebook Live in a way that lets you do comments. Because I think the first week, for whatever reason, we didn't have it where you could do comments easily. And had, so we learned how to do that. And then the second week, we said, oh, my gosh. Um, you really need people assigned from all 13 of these campuses yeah, right. to all these broadcasts, right. or you have no one collecting and connecting with the people. So this week we connected all of them. So you are watching us on Church for the Rest of Us, right. and you may be like, uh, I'm a single staff church and I already knew all that. That's you right. probably did. That's right. But it's taken us three weeks to figure it out. And even today we've already met and said, okay, we've got a tweak. Um, and, and what did we learn this weekend from our services so that we can stay more connected and do a better job of connecting through this medium um, this this weekend. And Carly, you've done such a fantastic job helping us spin up moderators for YouTube, for our website, for all these Facebook pages. I'm curious as to your thoughts about what we're learning on this. It's been interesting. Well, it's forced us to learn the platforms a lot better and really dive in um, and how to make those tweaks to work um, 
in our favor. So we use keywords in, in YouTube. We use tags when we publish our videos now. Um, we want to be cognizant of being consistent in our naming convention. So when people do a search, then it pops up more likely than somebody else. Um, and in Facebook, too, we, we just want to take advantage of such a great infrastructure that Facebook has already built. So there's not a lot of reinventing the wheel for us. We just need the manpower to really work the system that they've created in a really effective way for us. Yeah, and helping to tell people what that is um, across, you know, the campuses and just teaching them. It always changes so fast, too. That's what's hard about social media. It does. Um, Mm -hmm. One of our volunteers that you all know, Nancy Francis, um, as I've talked with her through this all, she always tells me, you're in the storm, you're in the storm, so you're going to go storm, form, norm. (laughs) So, um, and that every week it feels like that. We're like storm, and we try to form, and we try to get to norm, but it we don't quite get there, so now another storm comes along, and we're Foreman or Norman. The and storms yeah. keep changing yeah, exactly. on us. Exactly. Right. <laughs> um, but I think that, Derek, you've done such a great job leading through this. And yes. the student ministry, we haven't really touched on them, but they've done some incredible things in just the last few weeks, I think. Yeah, they were probably the team that was uh, perhaps the, the – team that was best positioned throughout all of this because they were already moving in some of these directions in terms of trying to put more content online and in social media platforms. And so they they've really have done just a great job, and they did such a great job of shepherding students and families already uh, that they, they have just – you know, they've, they've put out week at a glance calendars where they have uh, something for students to do every single day and a leader for them to connect with and a Bible truth for them to connect with. Uh, and then they're already working on, uh, you know, in the next couple of days, we're going to, you know, start talking to our church about a digital D now and a, uh, they're calling house party weekend. So I think it's just a really creative way and innovative way to help connect with teenagers when they're stuck at home and most of them don't have anything to do. And so we're going to provide a really, I think a really top notch experience for them. Yeah, I mean, just last night, uh, my one of my daughters is a sixth grader. Yeah. Uh, Derek has a sixth grader as well. And they were on a Zoom call with their group. There's probably 20 girls and a couple of leaders. And they were on a Zoom call last night. The Zoom call went beyond the Zoom free limits. Uh-oh. And then they had another one. <laughs> 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 it just kept going like, all night long, I guess. But uh, I've been I've been really proud Don't of that. Don't tell as well. Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, Zoom if you're listening. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, uh, Derek, all of these people listening again, some of them may feel like they don't have a lot of resources. They may feel really defeated by this whole situation because they may feel like I just don't have the resources, the bandwidth or the know how to do all this online stuff. They don't have cameras. They don't have you know, what what would you say to them? Like how can they use this? crisis to move the ball forward anyways yeah great question pastor jimmy i mean i think a couple of things uh number one we always say go to the people that are in your congregation and the people that you're connected yes. to so you have volunteers um they, they may have family members you don't know anything about tv maybe there's somebody that works in local tv or local broadcast in your community uh reach out to people make friends with people it's part of the reason it's so important to make friends with uh, people in your community because there are experts and there are people in your community that would want to help you and then secondly, I would say, um, you know, reach out to, to churches in your area and see, you know, we, we've, we've talked internally about how can we make some of the resources that we have at our church available to uh, churches in the area. And, uh, but we would love, if somebody would ask us, we would love to help them. And I think a lot of churches in a lot of communities are that way as well. I think that's true too. And I just think that a lot of times churches and pastors underestimate what they can actually do. It's easy to kind of retreat into the fetal position because I'm not good at social media and I don't even like iPhones and I'm not good on computers and I don't know how to make uh, movies or whatever. If you have teenagers or college students or anybody under 25 in your church, they know how to do it better than you. Mm -hmm. And I would go ahead and enlist them and say, well, we have mostly an older congregation. Well, then you have grandkids of the people in your church that are out of school. They can't work. They can't go anywhere. If you will enlist the young people in your church, here's where they can really come through and they can really shine. And they would love to do it because young people love being uh, Insta famous. They want to be on YouTube. They want to be on TikTok. They want to help you do it. If you'll go to them, they'll help you. Let's any closing words from you. Well, I liked what you told our teams last week, which is just um, as we huddled up and found out what they were working on and moved them into the next week, Pastor Jimmy just said, 
I just want you to move forward. <laughs> Whatever yeah, you right. do, move forward. So I think even though there's so much changing, and sometimes I do think we get paralyzed when so much is changing, just to find something to do and move forward and take the risk and see what God does with it. Mm-hmm. I think I that's saying. so good, too. You know, my dad was my football coach when I was in high school, and he always used to say, it's okay with me if you make a mistake. Just try to make the mistake while you're running full speed. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want our team to do. I want our team to move. I want them to try. And I know to our listeners, that's what you should be doing. That's what you've got to get. You cannot go into the fetal position. You cannot get paralyzed. Move the needle and then fix it later. Hey, I love you guys. I'm glad you listened to this on uh, our special viral edition, <laughs> virus edition, <laughs> corona edition of Church for the Rest of Us. We'll see you next time.